Hey everyone and welcome! So happy holidays and Merry Christmas. We gotta like get that out of the way first because it's this weekend. Oh yeah, it's this weekend. So we are hustling on our project. And you can see I'm getting ready, you know, for this weekend. I got my big oversized comfy sweater. Of course, my Merry Christmas cheer hat with, uh, you know, Mickey Mouse ears, Mickey Mouse ears back here. So I am celebrating, oh, I got my uh, Eeyore sweater. So this was not planned. I mean it, this was not planned. So I guess I'm doing a Disney theme Christmas, but we are now one step closer to completing our ornament. So if you guys remember the very first stream last week, the objective was to get both of our ornaments talking to each other. So via Wi-Fi, if I pressed the light up button, then the lights on both of them would light up. And then if I pressed the sound button, then both buzzers went off. And we remember how like awful that was. That was like, you know. So uh, I think we might've woken up Skynet. So hopefully, you know. Skynet will give us a, a nice Merry Christmas before it starts taking over the world. So I see all y'all pu uh, pouring in, of course, Kurt Benning, hey Kurt. And we have Dave with uh, music and chicken drumsticks. Now I had not thought of that combo. That's a, that's a pretty good combo, music and food. Uh, and we have Larry, he's saying uh, Merry Christmas to you too. So Merry Christmas to all of you guys and Kurt Benning, of course. Ho, 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 Merry Christmas, one and all. And I will say to you guys, ho, 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 now I have a machine gun. Oh. So last year we did a Die Hard theme ornament. This year we're doing, I would say this one leans more Terminator since we are kind of you know, messing around with connected devices and things. So yeah, this is more of like a Terminator uh, Christmas. So guys, the objective now is when we first saw our two, uh, you know, our two little guys here, they looked kind of lame, you know, for Christmas ornaments. This is not really something you want to give to someone, but it's a great first step in learning how the ESP6288 <laughs> Node MCU works. Uh, so you can see I have one of them plugged in. We're not really going to bother with the second one because we've already got them both working. So that big step is done. Now we're going to expand upon the lighting scheme, like get some cool lighting going on and have the buzzer instead of making that really annoying sound, well, make it play a Christmas song and that's basically the whole stream today is focusing on this buzzer and getting our Christmas song selected coded into music and then listening to it play and then next stream we're going to be wrapping this up I'm going to show you guys how to tie more than one LED into one pin without frying your board we're going to use transistors but that part of the stream is really very short which leaves the most probably important thing, which is transferring this kind of ugliness into a cool PCB board. So that way it's like gift worthy. You can give it to someone. So songs today and then a little bit on lights the next time and then making it all pretty. And then we'll be ready. We'll be ready. This will be ready for you to give to somebody uh, for the holidays. So let's get composing. You see, I got all my musical equipments here getting ready to go. So today we're going to learn a little bit about music. We're not going to get into a whole music theory lesson and how to read music. Just a little bit enough for you to be able to play your own songs. And today, of course, we're focusing on Christmas. But heck, you can do Star Wars tunes. You can do whatever tune you want, an original composition. Who knows? Might be a platinum hit. Uh, so, uh, Davis ain't come with me if you want to live. Yes, that is the, the theme of our, our show. So, one of the things that I found while doing both of these, uh, uh, breadboards, that's the word, breadboards. I'm going to put this guy aside for now so that way I don't mistakenly plug him in and we're going to focus on this guy. So, one of the things I notice is that we have been using an active buzzer, which I used because it's the buzzer that we're all familiar with. It's the buzzer that you can make a project like this to alert you if your water heater, say, leaks. It'll make a really annoying sound uh, or you can use it uh, if somebody opens the lid on the cookie jar. It, it'll do a good job of alerting you but its frequency range ain't great and for music making it's 
it sounds kind of dirty. So this is an active buzzer. So if you want to do music, the better buzzer to use is a passive buzzer. And they look pretty different, but depending on the one you get, they can look pretty similar. And I want to show you guys the easiest way to tell them apart. But first, I'm going to zoom you in. Zoom you in. And Silvio is here. Oi, Silvio. Uh, and he, he just got in. Então a gente vai começar a fazer música, mas agora eu vou uh, mostrar uh, a diferença entre este e este. Esse uh, faz um barulho ativo e esse é mais uh, adormecido. So, the way, the easiest way to tell is this one cannot be powered by a battery directly. It needs some kind of oscillating circuit to tell it what frequency to play. You know, and the same thing is true here, you know, but the difference is the active buzzer can be directly tied to a battery and it'll just play a sound. Uh, so, knowing that this is our passive one, let's just see how horrible this thing sounds. Yeah, that's, that's pretty awful and I have it tied to you know a, a small battery if you were to do a larger battery you get a louder sound uh, so I believe this one it says right here can take anywhere between 3 and 24 volts you know so you can uh, pump it pump it with some juice there so I'm gonna play a jingle bell song that I already composed to illustrate the difference between what like the active buzzer sounds like and what our passive buzzer sounds like. Now, the other nice thing about this is you can see why most applications use this for a little Christmas card that you open up and it plays that like quick little song, uh, you know, or putting it on a small PCB. Something this size is a much better than something like huge like that. But I'm gonna try and kind of hold this in place for you guys to listen to what it sounds like on an active buzzer when we play our tune. And I think I have the code loaded. If I don't, I'll have to, to load it. Oh, and the computer has fallen asleep, which means my whole device here has fallen asleep. So, wakey, wakey. Let's get everybody woken up. It's like this computer is lazy. It's like sleeping till noon. Like, what is this, people? I've been up, so I expect my equipment to be up. So if you guys haven't gotten your big oversized fuzzy sweaters, Now's the time to do it because we are going to be coding some songs pretty soon here. All right, so I think everything is awoken and uh, let's have it play some music. Let's see how. It's still going. I am gonna like, if I have to suffer through this, you guys are suffering through it. And I'm holding it right up to the mic for maximum annoyance. <gasps> oh, it came unhooked. Oh, you guys are so lucky it fell off. Oh man. Mm. All right, so I guess I'll have to, I, I had been suffering all yesterday composing this tune. But you can see kind of like how it sounds a little bit dirty. And Silvio from Brazil is asking the same thing. Então, Silvio, esse faz um barulho mais, mais sujo. E esse faz um barulho, é um pouco mais quieto, mas é mais limpo. Então, a gente vai ver agora o som desse. So now we're going to see what this one uh, sounds like and it is polarized so you got to make sure you oh did you guys see that I was like pulling my non-existent glasses onto my eyeballs Ugh. all right so you see I composed the whole jingle bells and typically for these projects you don't do that you pick like the chorus or just like a verse in a chorus that's kind of like what we'll be doing uh, I coded this whole one so you guys can really listen to the to the buzzer uh, so you'll see that there's like a little Let's see if it'll focus. A little positive right there. So that's how you know. And it doesn't 100% fit the breadboard. I had to kind of, you know, finagle its legs a little bit. So I'm going to hold this up and see kind of like what this whole thing sounds like. So let me push the button. nicer right guys just clean a little softer you know but clean 
It's a lot like what you expect when you open those Christmas cards and things like that. And you can see that our two, you, I, I stepped it up. I added a second, you know, LED. Whoa, I know the flash and, and the, the Christmas joy is way too much with this. Uh, so my idea is that when I push the lights button, this red one, I'm going to have a series of lights um, blinking on and off, you know. And so here you see I have like a couple cool colors uh, going on. So I have two reds, I have some yellow, some blue, and some green. And when you put these all together, they're quite Christmassy, you know, and we might give our tree like a star topper, maybe a white one, you know, just to make it different from everything else. And so like I've always been saying since we started Arduino projects, you never want to put more than one LED on a pin, uh, even with this board. Now the Arduino, each pin can support up to 20 to max 40 amps. So 20 is its like optimum, you know, that's where it uh, operates optimum. And you can always kind of like figure that these uh, suck about uh, 20, 20 amps each. So um, that's why it's always been one LED per pin. Uh, if you put two, then you can uh, destroy the pin, you can harm the pin, or you can exceed the max uh, amp of the board. And all this information is on the data sheet when you buy the board. And so for this board, I believe the max is 800 and each pin is 12 milliamps only, you know? And so that's the source. The sink is different. The sink can take more. So that's why these LEDs are fine the way they are. So it turns out I lied. It turns out you could totally put as many LEDs as you want on one pin. It's true. And the way we're going to do that next week is by using transistors. And that's going to be rather short. So on to the button here, which we're going to focus on today. You can see I have it uh, wired. And I went ahead and put our trusty 100 ohm um, a resistor there, you know, just for, for safety sake. So we're going to stick with this one because, you know, this one is just so awful. I'm going to, you know, put him aside. You know, he's got his purposes for warning you about things, but you know, that's, that's about that. So I figure let's uh, get into some music. I have like, you know, a little bit of a helper here just to kind of illustrate a couple things. And he is dusty. I, I haven't played him in a while. Look, oh, this is embarrassing guys. Look at all that dust. Are you serious? Oh, I did not clean this before the stream. Yeah. So goes to say I, I haven't played in a bit, you know, so I'm going to just uh, warm up with you guys. Kind of like get back into it. So uh, I apologize if this uh, doesn't sound too great. So this violin has been sitting here in the shop, which is like super cold. So wood is a lot like metal, expands, contracts, depending on, uh, you know, the weather and the temperature. Uh, and so... Uh, here, I just been like tuning it and retuning it for it to acclimate, you know, to this colder, colder climate that we have going on here versus like a real legit orchestra hall, which is like temperature controlled and stuff. We don't got none of that here. All right. So what I'm going to do is move on to the computer here and uh, start showing you guys some music theory type of things. And I did ask you guys, what is your favorite classic Christmas song? You know, send it in through Discord or social media. And a few of you guys chimed in so I'm going to show you some of the songs that you guys kind of submitted and we're going to learn how to read them and figure out what the most important parts of them are for us to then translate that song into code oh yeah people yeah people so I am going to kind of like scooch over here I'm not going to put you on uh, intermission or anything but let me scooch myself over here I'm scooching 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 oh yes it would be helpful to get a mic over here so I'm going to just flip this mic over here and I'm going to flip him around so he's actually facing me wouldn't that help people wouldn't that help all right so now I'm going to switch us to my computer view right here I'm gonna put this down here get my my codes up and first I think we're gonna look at yes a keyboard and no I'm talking to you here all right I got way too many, uh, way too many you guys is and only one of me. So I'm going to like scooch. So at least I'm in the picture, right? I mean, that, that helps. And I'm going to try and, um, what did I say? 40. Oh, geez. Larry caught me in, in another lie. <laughs> so I messed up. So Dave Beck is also saying that a much cleaner sound on the second one. Yeah. The passive one. So if you want to do music composition, Listen, it's up to you. Use whatever one you want. Maybe you want to compose some dirty grunge, then go for the active buzzer. Uh, but most, you know, musical type of 
applications are the passive buzzer. So back to Larry's catching me in a lie. Uh, so uh, he's also ready for some uh, eggnog. So when I said each pin can handle up to 40 amps max, no, holy moly, can you imagine if that little board could handle 40 amps? I mean, I'd be building a spaceship off that thing. So no, it's milliamps. So Larry is correct. It is milliamps. So 20 to 40 milliamps on an Arduino, 20 uh, milliamps is ideal for those pins. And for the ESP6288, it is uh, 12 milliamps. So we're going to use resistors and transistors to kind of help keep everything at that level. So good catch, uh, Larry, or else people would have been like hooking up like, you know, all kinds of stuff to their Arduino and then writing me like, why did my Arduino fry? You fried my Arduino. All right. So a lot of you guys going back to elementary school here may remember like early piano playing days. If, if you guys did this, uh, our, our basic keyboard and it, average piano has about seven octaves. Now, like the bigger ones may have a couple notes on one end more and on the other end, you know, it's like a expanded, but they all pretty much have seven octaves. And an octave is basically this sequence of notes that you see here. And so I've labeled the keys. We all know how to play chopsticks and stuff like that. So you can see your chopstick keys. And so we're going to use this as reference. Sometimes it helps me to play an instrument while I'm trying to compose something, whether it be sitting down at the piano which is originally how I was thinking of doing the stream, but then I'd have to move like everything to the other room. So I figured it's easier to just move a violin, an old dusty violin into the garage than moving the entire setup into the piano room. Uh, so you can see here our C, D, E, F, G, A, B. After B, this entire sequence repeats itself an octave higher and so forth and so forth fourth on uh, all the way up and down the piano. So you can see our black keys. You can see that I have uh, a series of letters in bold, you know, like C sharp. And that basically means any black key is a half note higher than the key right next to it. So you can see C, C sharp, but it also is close to the D. And so a half note uh, below is a flat. Uh, so this black key is actually known by two names, C sharp and D flat. Uh, so you can see a lot of the black ones or all of the black ones can be known by two names. Now we're going to focus just on the sharps because the library we're using uses sharps. So I left the, the, the flat ones just kind of there for reference, but we're pretty much going to just focus on the sharps. And can anyone tell me another name? There's two other notes that uh, white notes that can go by other names as well. So like an F, an F can also go as a E sharp, right? Because it's one half note higher and there is no black note in between them. Uh, likewise, uh, a C can be a B sharp. Uh, so you know, they, those are the two that can also have different names, uh, but we're rarely going to come across that uh, with our writing. So I kind of left that stuff off. So just to familiarize you guys with, you know, this, uh, the layout of the piano, we're not really going to revisit this uh, much going forward, but you know, it's, it's your starting point. And the C is very important, uh, which the fourth octave, C4, the fourth octave is where most beginning music is written. And so you'll see a lot of the songs that I pulled up are all written within this fourth octave just to kind of make our lives easier. So we're not going all the way down here and then jumping all the way to the other end of the piano. And uh, Hannah next, uh, Han Exit is here. Hey, Han Exit, thanks for joining. And we're in the middle of a quick music tutorial before we start actually coding this stuff into our ESP6288 Wi-Fi module uh, because we are making internet controlled Christmas ornaments. Oh yeah. So guys, now let me uh, go on to this next thing here. This is probably the thing that we're gonna spend the most time on, which is the scale and referring back to this. So you can see like it's just a scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, you know, so that's the fourth octave. Then it re when it returns to C the next octave up, now you're starting the fifth octave in this lonely little C all the way on the right, that starts the sixth octave. 
And so if you look at the code, you're going to see these notes, C, D, E, F, G, all referred to what octave it is. So that way the Arduino or the buzzer knows like which octave to play that C because there's like seven different C's starting from really low. This is the lowest that my voice can go. Not real low. That's kind of lame. You know how some guys have the... So yes, this is my C. And then the highest C that you can do, which is the like a C. So those are not octaves of each other at all because I cannot sing. So thank God we're going to go to the violin because <laughs> that was pretty horrible. Uh, so you can see that most of the songs that we're going to be writing is in that fourth octave range. We might dip a little bit into the fifth, just maybe those first couple notes, and we might dip down into the third by a note or two, depending on which song we choose. Um, so I imagine like you guys are kind of familiar with, you know, how octaves go. And uh, let me, ooh, I'm just going to step away from you guys for a second, turn this on just to kind of amplify it and see how it goes and henna next it is going oh wow he is probably like uh, horrified by my lack of octave ability so hopefully you guys can hear that let me even see if this this darn thing is in tune because it's, it's been sitting you know so that's the a and it's a little bit flat because the strings as they sit in this climate they stretch out to accommodate the climate okay that's a little high but we'll leave it so basically I'm probably gonna hit I'm gonna hit stuff but all right so I'll do it like this so so like you know I'm gonna start from the bottom and I'm gonna work my way all the way up to the top and we're starting in a C scale and if you notice that like squirrely thing the treble clef all the way on the left there you see that there's no flat symbols or sharp symbols a sharp symbol looks like a hashtag and the flat symbol looks like a very fancy little miniature B uh, so this is the easiest way to learn that way you don't have to deal with accidentals you know so your scale is So that very high C was the one I'm, I got it, <laughs> I got it. All right, so I can hit that, all right, right, you know. So this is our C4, and I know I'm driving this into you because you're going to totally see this is important to remember like your fourth octaves. So your entire fourth octave is just, and then it's like we kind of need another note, but that starts the fifth octave, right? So we're going to be coming back um we're going to be coming back to this a lot as we compose <laughs> uh, davis is laughing and henna exit is saying i'm horrified you don't have the vocal range the same as a piano i know right <laughs> Well, some like um, the the opera people are just like all the way down to up, both women, men. I'm like, that just takes years of training. And growing up, I was never into vocal singing. Heck, I'm terrible at remembering lyrics because I play a, like a melodic instrument. I remember melodies more. So I can sing the melody of the song horribly, of course, horribly. Uh, but that's what I remember. So I don't remember the lyrics, but the notes. <laughs> All right. So here are some of the songs that you guys have submitted. Like, hey, we're kind of interested in this. So of course we have our classic jingle bells and you can see from the left side here, uh, there's a hashtag looking thing. You know, that's an F sharp. So this is written in the key of G that means, and you don't have to know all this stuff. Like who cares? All that says is that every F that we come across in this song, we have to call it an F sharp. Remember that that key, uh, the keyboard here? So that's going to be an F sharp. Uh, and the reason why they put that F sharp in the, um, let me just get that out of the way. The reason why they put it next to the treble clef is that every time you have an F, they don't want to sit there drawing it over and over again. So they put it in one universal spot on every line to remind you when you get to the other line. By the way, if you come across any Fs, it's going to be sharp. Uh, so I tried to pick keys, uh, keys that are very simple, like either no flats or sharps or just one, you know? So we have our jingle bells. This is what I use to code 
the annoyance that you heard at the table with the active buzzer and then like it sounded better with the passive buzzer. So Carl's saying, bring out the electric violin. So yeah, we'll play through a couple of these tunes. Oh, they're tiny. I'm going to have to like, you know, kind of play up like this. So we have uh, our jingle bells. We have, uh, this one was by Dave Beck. He wanted out. Uh, hallelujah i've also seen it spelled alleluia with an a uh so i just took it you know what what was on the song and you can see that this one has got the treble clef but it's written in six eight time unlike uh jingle bells you see a four four that means it's just one two three four one two three four uh so the rhythms are a little bit easier uh to code with four four time but once you code four four time you'll be able to code any time signature it becomes very very easy uh whereas something like hallelujah is one two three four five six one two three four five six uh, and then, so that one was, and then, you know, maybe one of my favorite, uh, submissions, grandma got run over by a reindeer. Come on people. It's Christmas. Gotta have some humor. Uh, so again, this one is in four, four. Uh, so here, instead of four black notes, you can see that each of these, uh, notes connected with, with that line above becomes an eighth note. So it's two eighth notes per quarter note. So when we were in four, four time, it's one, two, three, four. You can make it as fast as you want. One, two, three, four. But when you have an eighth note, it's half of a quarter note. So it's one, two, three, four. So each of those claps is an eighth note, is an eighth note versus the one, two, three, four. Uh, and I'm not too much in time, but you know, oh well. Uh, so you'll see, you know, a series of different notes and we'll get to all of that as, as we code. So I'm showing you guys all this so that way you can pick your favorite song. And then also I believe Larry submitted the Holly and the Ivy. Um, and I personally was not too familiar with this one. And I don't know that you guys are too familiar with it either. So I'm gonna play through this one just for you guys to, actually I might play through all of them just so in case you haven't heard, Grandma got run over by a reindeer. So we'll have a, an idea of what they sound like. And for this, I might actually stand so I don't hit stuff. Like there's like stuff all over and I'm gonna hit my elbow. So I might not quite be in, in camera. And um, Hand Exit is saying, uh, well, I work as a freelancing opera singer. And I mean, we don't have that range either, even though we need a broad vocal range. I mean, still your guys's range is like impressive so now i'm like super embarrassed and i shall not sing anymore on this stream because we have a legit singer that is like oh my god her technique her technique um all right and then we have dave uh you should know by now i almost never do anything easy i know dave probably picked the the hardest in terms of like you know if you don't know anything about music he, he threw in all the hard stuff but we'll, we'll get to it we'll get to it so we have the holly and the ivy and yeah i i kind of had forgotten about this tune and this one was submitted by by larry if i hit stuff i hit stuff you know so um so this one is in um g major most christmas songs are going to be major you know because they're happy and stuff like that <laughs> That's mostly in tune. We'll, we'll live with it. So. Holly in the Ivy and uh, let's see what else we got here um, grandma got run over by the uh, reindeer now those of you that are musicians will kind of know what I'm talking about uh, I tried to find beginning uh, versions of these songs and so when you play a, a beginning version of a song uh, it's it's simplified so if you've played the much more complex version of it like your head wants to play the more complex but your eyes are seeing the simplified version and there's a fight that goes on uh internally so sometimes you'll see me like whoop you know catch myself uh playing you know the wrong beat or something like that that is not written but in other more um syncopated uh versions of it it is so well we're making this up 
All right, so this is Grandma Got Run Over by a Ranger, which was submitted by Bounty Hunter Breaks on Discord. So if you guys are not on Discord, definitely get on there. Now, I'm not as familiar with this, so I might take a couple breaks just to kind of like look at it. But I, I do remember when it came out and it was like, you know, a, a big hit. So with this one, I don't know if the first C note is correct in the actual recording tune version of it, but we'll go. We'll play the way it is. And I don't remember how the verse goes. <laughs> All right, guys. So this is Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer. Ooh, ow. <laughs> Now this is the the verse. Has she been drinking my nose? Oh yes, I think I remember how this goes. So that's your grandma got run over by a, a reindeer there. And uh, let's see, what else we got? What else we got? And I, I kind of made these in big old vision for my eyes, people. I think this is kind of like, um, oh, I forgot to put the grandma got run over by a reindeer song for you guys. But that's it. That's uh, what, what I was playing there. And you can see that it is in 4-4 four, four time as well. So that makes things a lot easier. So let me pull up Jingle Bells for you guys too and not be like, you know, a Scrooge and be like, haha, I'm playing this in secret and you can't even see it. <laughs> All right. So yeah, poor grandma. <laughs> poor little grandma. And we have Isaac uh, Tirado here too. Uh, welcome, Isaac. We're going to be putting all these notes into code here pretty soon. But you guys... Yeah, start chiming in which one you want us to do, all right? And we'll pick a verse and chorus and code it. So our final option here is Jingle Bells. Oh, I messed up. Let's start over again. See, this is live. Anything can happen. And I think it would also be easier. I'm just going to make the music a ton ton bigger there we go let's give it another go rewind <laughs> Christmas oh my god the requests are gonna start but guys we need to pick one of these songs and if you guys like more violin playing then we can definitely do like you know like a request hour or something you know for for one of our streams uh, so all right is is there like a consensus here of what we want to do or else I'll, I'll pick I'll pick my my favorite uh oh and we have one more uh without uh, delay and there is a mistake in this song for sure and I'll try and remember where it is so I correct it on the fly. I ain't gonna promise that it's gonna happen, you know, but we'll correct it on the fly with Rachel's rusty violin playing skills. Uh, so, uh, where'd it go? Oh. oh, I accidentally shut down all my music. So let me uh, grab that one again. And where is Hallelujah? All right, so we gotta do this one too. So I have that one for up for you guys. And you can see that it's the six, eight time. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So you're going to feel that it's got kind of like a different bit of movement. Um, so this is kind of the, ah, Carl's like Detroit Rock City. He's like, screw this music stuff or, or this Christmas stuff. Let's make our ornament play like kiss. 
I'm not gonna lie, that's pretty cool. I would definitely dig a Chris or a Kiss ornament or a Metallica ornament or you know all that kind of stuff. So, so yeah, you'll you'll kind of feel this one's got more of like a shuffle to it, um, and you can even like as I play in your head one two three four five six, you know. Okay, one two three four five. <laughs> that's your hallelujah as I banged everything that I had here um, as I played but all right so we have uh Silvio is choosing alleluia so we have like an alleluia uh so as I prepare our coding uh I'll let you guys chime in and pick your your favorite song and I'll keep the violin here as reference as we code a said song and I'll I, I didn't plan this out quite quite right you know my chicken wings here are, are hitting everything uh, so let's get into some of this code while you guys chime in all right we got one uh, one alleluia here all right so and I got to dust off some violin playing so it'll inspire me to like make some time to play to play some more right people all right, so let's uh, get rid of all this. Um, and here's our cold, which looks not as artistic, you know, as, as our music. Uh, so, the flight of the bumblebee. Oh, yeah. So, um, Dave is saying C, so I'm going to imagine he's voting for his Alleluia. Um, oh, and see if you has a good um, song, Gloria a Deus. É uma música muito bonita essa. So, we are... Uh, so jingle bells um, so basically most of this code should be familiar to you guys like where we um, set up our different things and then here for um, you know to connect to our Wi-Fi service where everything is hooked up we kind of went through all this uh, and then notes in the melody all right so this is sounding kind of familiar uh, so here uh, we start our melody and you start seeing like this kind of stuff here like that I was talking D4 B4 A4 like what is this uh, so somebody has taken the time to sit at the piano and figure out what frequencies match each note up and down the piano right and they made a file called pitches this file here that I've uh, now flipped to just making sure it flipped to uh, as well for you guys and so uh, you can see here note C1 so that's the C of the very first octave of the piano the most lowest one. Oh, I said I wasn't gonna do that anymore because we got a real opera singer here so uh, and so the frequency is 33 so if you go on up and remember when I, I highlighted those sharps uh, G sharp uh, from the first octave and you can see that they don't deal in flats here so we only worry about making something uh, sharp which in this lesson I don't think we're gonna really hit any any sharps too much but here you start seeing the number two because we're moving into our second octave and here into our third octave how many octaves does this thing go now uh, C4 is really important because that is our middle C that's this one the one on our uh, scale so so that's our our oh I, I got it oh I'm getting better I'm getting better I should do more of these strings because then I'll, I'll have a better vocals so that C4 is that low and you see that I'm on my very very last low string you know so I don't have very much you know that's your middle C that's your B a that's the lowest that it goes on this um violin is the g uh the g3 so 
I don't think we're composing anything lower than than like a four or dipping into the threes. So we'll be fine. So you can see here that as I scroll through, it starts, it keeps going up the octaves until we're at octave number seven. And then it hits a couple eight, you know, eighth octave, because remember, so many of the bigger, nicer pianos are expanded beyond the seven octaves. They have a couple notes on the bottom end and maybe even a couple notes on the top end, uh, depending on your piano. Uh, so that's uh, pretty much all the notes that we're gonna use. So you can see the note and then the frequency associated with this. So somebody painstakingly did this, it's done for us. So all we ever have to do is just use this part of the code, uh, tell it what note, and then it'll refer to this file to pick out these frequencies. So we don't have to remember any of these frequencies. So I'm gonna, uh, so we don't really have to look at this uh, anymore. And so now hopefully you have a better understanding of where these notes are coming from. So note D4 is the D of the fourth octave. Uh, so if we look at this scale right here, it's that D, that's the very first D you see in the fourth octave. So by looking at this chart and looking at the music, we'll be able to match up what octave we're at and what note that we need to put in. Uh, so that should make things a lot easier. So let me get rid of this, this here. So you can see I went ahead and wrote out the entire Jingle Bell song, which I don't really recommend doing for like short little projects, you know, like a little card that you're opening up because then the person's like, oh, that's cute. It's still going and going and then they're going to get a hammer and start to bang the thing to get it to shut up. So yeah, I would say either just the chorus or a verse and chorus is probably the better way uh, to go. So Hertz, yes. Uh, so all the frequencies are in, I believe they're in Hertz. Uh, but there is a documentation that further explains uh, those pitches. Uh, and then uh, Silvio is asking if I play other instruments other than the violin. Uh, so yes, yes, a violin is my primary instrument. Um, I haven't played it too often much, you know, some of you can, you know, that are real musicians can probably tell. Uh, so um, I actually enjoy doing stuff like this where you just kind of dust something off that you haven't done. Uh, but I also play piano and guitar, yeah, although this is uh, my primary instrument. Uh, so I will, will relay the same to Silvio. Uh, então, Silvio, eu toco o violino. Uh, é o instrumento que eu toco mais, mas eu também toco violino, or, or piano e guitarra. Eu gosto de tocar esses dois, mas o violino é que eu toco bastante, só que faz tempo que eu não toco, talvez uns dois anos eu pego ele de vez em quando, mas não muito. Então, se você chegou uh, bem no início, eu mostrei todo o pó para o povo. Quanto pó tinha nesse violino de tanto tempo que passou que eu não toco ele? Então, é muito legal pegar ele um pouquinho, mesmo que não é perfeito para a gente entender a, a música aqui. All right. So uh, Hannah Exit is saying, do you guys count first octave and onwards and not subcontra, contra, big octave, small octave, uh, octave, and so on? For this coding, yes. Uh, it's very much simplified and it's just first octave, second octave, all the way up to the seventh octave. And I think, uh, I think it did touch a little bit on the eighth. Let's see down here. Yep, a tiny bit. Tiny bit in the eighth here. So for the simple purposes of code, yeah, it's just the basic octaves. All right, uh, and Bounty Hunter is here. And what have I missed? You only missed me playing your song on violin. I played um, your grandma got run over by a reindeer, but I I'll play them all, all again uh, towards the end for those of you wandering in late. So what we're about to do is actually take the songs and code them, you know. So basically, um, here where it says in melody, this is where we're gonna put our melody, the actual notes. We're not gonna worry about timing. We're just gonna put every note that we need. Now you're gonna notice something funky here. Like what is that zero? Like that wasn't in the file. It doesn't have an octave. Like how does the buzzer know to play that? Uh, so zero means shh, quiet, it's a rest. So you use zeros as rest when you want you know, your, your buzzer to be quiet. 
Uh, so down here, once we put in our melody, and of course we, we close it with our curly bracket there, uh, this is where we specify the note durations. So it's a little weird for a musician to look at notes up here and the actual beats down here. Uh, and so here I put a couple notes for you guys that the number four represents a quarter note. So and the eight represents the eighth note, which is two eighth notes per quarter note. Right? And so you can extrapolate from there, the lower the number, the longer the tone is gonna play. The, the smaller the number, like for a 16th note, you'll put the number 16. Uh, and so that's how you take the music and then you translate it to the beats. Uh, so you can see here, I have quarter note. Uh, this is Jingle Bell. So, um, Oh, I have a, a a zero. Okay, so you'll see what I mean. I know this is maybe not making a, a sense, but this is where you put your note durations per note. So quarter notes, eighth notes, 16th notes. And sometimes you have to do some funky extrapolations. Like I found to play a dotted quarter note using the number five um, worked really well. So, you know, go figure. Uh, so once you get to the bottom of all of your individual note timings, you know, then you close it off. Uh, so then we kind of talked a lot about this code already. You want to initiate your feed. So that way if one person pushes the light up button or the song button, all the other ornaments around the world that are tied to Wi-Fi will gather from this feed and, uh, you know, do the same. So uh, here's where we set our... Uh, our individual elements are they inputs or outputs you know so the music button and the light button these are all inputs you know it's you're sending inputs and then the buzzer pin is an output you know it's going to play the music the red leds are going to illuminate so they're outputs uh, here's you're going to connect to the speed service so i'm just going through pretty quickly because we kind of like went more in detail uh, with this uh before uh here is just a um a function to handle the message so anytime somebody pushes a button it sends this message to our feed uh, and then it relays it to all the others uh, so and here's just you're telling it to connect so this is the part of the code that runs over and over again uh, so you can see here uh, that it's uh, this is the first thing that you put at the top of your code so that way it stays connected to your uh, cloud services site uh, so now uh, here is a set of uh, code that talks about what is the state of the button. Is it pressed? Is it not pressed? You know, so we can relay this uh, information. Uh, then I'm just going to kind of like go all the way down here where it gets into the good stuff. So here, um, if command equals one, which means I press the music button and all this is specified on top, you know, of the code. And if you guys want more, more details about this part of the code, you can always watch the previous video where we basically went block by block and then just kind of explained what everything is. And a bounty hunter is saying, I will have to rewind and watch later. Uh, so, oh, definitely, you know. And uh, so here uh, we're saying if I press the music button, well, time to activate that buzzer, you know. So uh, all the lights will light up. Right now we only have two measly lights, you know, but I'm going to put more lights. Uh, so they'll all light up and stay lit as this song plays. Uh, and so now we're going to have it iterate over the notes of the melody. So... Uh, here from note 0 to note 110 and this is important you have to count up every note and every rest in your code and make sure you put the number uh, here so that way if you forget this you're going to totally know if this were set to six and you made this huge composition only the first six notes are going to play uh, so you always have to remember to come here and change this and it's going to uh, play through all the notes plus plus it's going to increase and play through uh, all your song now to calculate the entire duration of the song so we did set durations per note but a quarter note depending on how fast you want your song could be or it could be Right, so you have to experiment with this a uh, little bit. So I put, you know, a thousand, 
and a thousand divided by the note duration and it's going to calculate all those numbers that you put in dividing it by a thousand so it equalize everybody's got their equal beats or extrapolate it you know to what they're supposed to be now if you uh do a song and it's like way too fast you're like holy crap slow down there i want the entire song to be slowed down well you don't change that up above you change it here and so i want the song to be twice as slow so i'm gonna make this 2000 you know or i want this to speed up so i'm gonna make this 500 to make it like jingle bells jingle bells like really quick jingle bells on crack right so for now i'm gonna leave it at a thousand so um when i change this code or i tell you where i'm changing it on the other computer you guys will be familiar with all this uh, all this stuff now tone is what makes the buzzer sound it, it's that command that says okay uh start making sounds it is connected to pin number five and start playing the the melody uh, and now a buzzer, if you don't tell it to kind of pause a little bit in between notes, it'll just be like for jingle bells, we're familiar with it. Like jingle bells, like mm, mm, mm. there's like a tiny pause between notes, but for a buzzer, it doesn't know that. So it'll be like, mm. and, and so to us, it'll sound like one giant thing. So we have to tell it like, Hey, can you add like a, a, a little bit of space between the notes? And I found that. Uh, people take the notes duration plus 30% of that note duration seems to be like the popular, you know, bit of code that people use. So that's what I use. I use, you know, one and 30% uh, of that note. Uh, and that just the delay between notes. So we set that. And then after it goes through the song, no tone five, that's the, the code that says stop playing like shut up now. Okay. We done with your song right now. Uh, so um, that's what happens when you press the music button. Now, of course, uh, and then the red LEDs go off. We send them low. And of course, every LED that we have connected, I'll have to duplicate this little bit of code, like the blues and the yellows and the whites or, you know, whatever we end up using. Uh, but this is kind of the simplified version as we focus on the buzzer for today and then the LEDs for tomorrow. And that portion will be pretty quick. Now, if I press the other button, it'll send command number two, which stands for uh, illuminate the light show. And this is where we're gonna write uh, some kind of uh, blinking type sequence. Maybe we can blink the reds, the yellows, the blues, and then the greens, uh, you know, and have it do that uh, a couple different times. Uh, so here for now, I just have the reds going on for 30 millisecond, or 300 milliseconds and then going off. Eh, we'll, we'll figure this part out next time. Uh, right now, we're going to basically concentrate on the music, which is all at the very top of the code. And the only thing that we're going to touch uh, at this part of the code is the entire tempo of the song. Like if we want the song to slow, go slower, like Alleluia might be nicer to make it a little slower. Or Grandma got run over by a reindeer. We might want to, you know, have a little bit jazzy, you know, have it, have it speed up a little bit. So we're going to keep like the, the rhythms uh, pretty simple. Uh, but you guys, once you do this example with me, you'll be able to do any song with a lot of these charts uh, that I have. So, um, you guys have not really voted on the song other than, I guess we have Alleluia. Um, that one I did not want to start out with just because the rhythms are a little more complex. So, I don't know, you guys are like having me pick. Uh, and then we'll, we'll look at briefly, uh, Alleluia as well, but I will pick Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer. Yes, I'll pick that one because Bounty Hunters just showed up and I thought it was uh, quite comical. So we'll pick that one and look at what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to delete all my hard work. I'm going to delete my jingle bells. Oh, it's gone. Oh, that hurts. That hurts people. I haven't saved elsewhere. Don't worry. Don't worry. All right. And I'm going to delete here and we are going to work pretty much in this part of our code. So, and Larry's saying, <laughs> you pick, eh, you pick. So we're going to be doing this song and I'm going to pull it up. Let's see here. Oh, grandma, it's getting cut off. So this is our grandma got run over by a reindeer and we're basically going to be referencing this song and our little scale chart here to match up the notes, right? So once more, because Larry just joined us and uh, this one is pretty uh, simple. Uh, Silent Night is pretty simple too. Um, I'd have to find that one first though, before we, before we play it. 
So I know a lot of you guys, uh, I see a couple more of you guys have joined. Uh, let me do um, Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer, but let me make it a big O vision for me because you guys, maybe you guys are watching on TVs and things, but I'm, I'm watching from a screen this, this tiny and I cannot see the songs. Um, all right, so there. It makes it much tougher finding these things uh, online because there's so only so much you can like make it big before having to put it into Photoshop and uh, sparing you guys from all that. So um, this one is one that we're all familiar with. I wasn't as familiar with as you know a lot of you guys. So let me get it in my head and you can see it uh, starts with eighth notes. <laughs> creative with the rhythming there but that's pretty much kind of like what what we're gonna work on and so let me uh, get rid of this and what I like about it is that this song starts off with the chorus right away so there, let's not dilly dally let's just get to the the goodies of this song uh, and then it gives you a verse there so we may be able to just code this whole song and if we move it along with the buzzer, it might not be that long where the person is sitting there like, oh my God, this thing's still going, you know? And then the, the hammer starts to like look really good, you know, to, to smash it, to smash that thing. You know, not very much holiday uh, cheer. So Bonnie is saying, gonna win a, win, a whammy, uh, gonna win a Grammy with that uh, rend rendition. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, Sylvia wants a piano. Oh my gosh, so that means I'm gonna have to move my entire uh, my entire rig there. So we'll do like a, a musical um, stream if you guys want to, uh, and then that way I have time to move everything and then we can just go through all the instruments and, and stuff like that. <laughs> uh, oh, Sylvia is, is asking for a really good song. I love Rush and he wants to hear Tom Sawyer. Um, and then play some Paganini. So yeah, is that like common domain? That's like one thing I, I tried to look and make sure these songs are mostly like public domain. I don't know that all of them are. Probably not Grandma, Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer. But I hope you guys are hearing me still. Uh, because even on live, if you play something copyright and the artist has specified within YouTube or Facebook or Twitch that they don't want that, your video is muted. So there's a chance you guys aren't even hearing me right now. Uh, so I'm sticking with some of these safe ones, but there's plenty of songs where artists are like, heck, you can play my song. Like you can't monetize your video, but you can play my song. And I'm like, yeah, I don't care. As long as we can play the song, we'll, we'll have a good time. All right, so let's start composing our, our song here. So I'm going to look at this and here, this very first note, well, that's a C. And if we refer to our chart, it's that very first C there. So that's our C4. Like I said, that's our middle C. Uh, so in the code, we're going to start, uh, if I actually show you guys uh, the code, that would be nice. There we go. Uh, so the first note is going to be um, not at all what I just wrote, but note C4. Okay, so that's the first note. And again, we're not caring about timing. We're just writing down the notes right, right now. So uh, going back to the song, and I'm gonna just slide the song over here so I can go back and forth. Um, then we have, you can see it's the same note over and over again. So how many times does that note go? One, two, three, four. And uh, I am just going to bring it up a little bit bigger for myself so I can actually see it. Because uh, I can't tell if that other note there is also, here we go. Uh, all right, so yes, then this next note is on the same line, and it goes one, two, three, four, five. There's five of them on the same line. So if we confer our, um, our scale here, it's this one right here. It's C, D, E. It's that very first E within the first octave. So E, four. All right. 
and that's five times. There's five of them guys. So I'm gonna put five uh, E4s here. So let's see how fast I can uh, do this. E4, note, E4, note, E4. So how many do I have? I have, where, where would be my mouse? Um, and also if you guys can see the code, that would be nice too, look at that. So you can see that I've put one, two, three, four. Oh, I need a fifth, right? Because I said there's five of them. All right, let's see how far we are in this song. Um, and without having to go back and forth between the scales, I already know what these uh, notes are, but the scale is something that you can find a C major scale printed out. Uh, and so later on, if you want to tackle this, you'll have that as reference, you know, for you. So we are almost through the first measure. We have two more notes. So after all those E's, we have a D and a C still within that uh, fourth octave. Uh, so if you look here, uh, we still have, oh, wrong one. Uh, we, they're still in, in within that fourth octave. So I'm going to give you a hint. The vast majority of this is going to written, be written in C4. There's a couple where we're going to dip into the fifth octave and maybe a little bit into the third, I remember, for this song. Uh, so I'm not going to keep going, you know, back and forth uh, between this, uh, you know, this particular slide here. We're going to go back and forth between the music and, and the code. So we have a D4 and a C4. So let's go ahead and do that. So note D4, note C4, right? So we have gotten through uh, one whole one whole bar, uh, quite a few to go. But you know, this, this will start uh, moving along faster. Now, it's totally up to you how you wanna code this. Uh, for instance, you can see all my notes here, or you can just keep going to the right all you want. But I try and group these in a way that's easy. When If we listen to it and there's a mistake, we want it to be easy to find where this mistake is. So what I tend to do is put two measures on each line. And then when I start a new line, then you know I put like a return space and you'll see what I mean. So for this one, we've gotten through one measure. So let's go ahead and do that second measure, which is a G quarter note. So uh, here we're gonna do, um, right here, note G, Four, and then note, I forget already which one the other one was, uh, E. So that's an E4. All right, so let's go to our E4, comma. Now we've gotten two measures, so I, I you know, return down to the next line just to kind of uh, make, uh, you know, make our lives a little bit easier. And Mark Choi saying, anything Christmas classic would do, yeah. Uh, so yeah, doing this at home, you guys can pick you know, any, any song that suits your fancy. All right, so before going on to the rest of the music, me personally, and again, you guys can do this any the heck way you want, I like to put the rhythms in now before we move on. So that way you get each line done at the same time while kind of what you did is fresh in your, your head. And if you decide you wanna change something, well, you haven't gotten a ton through the code to be able to change something. Uh, so let's go ahead, I'm just eyeballing this. Uh, here we have a whole bunch of eighth notes. So we have eight eighth notes. So here, I'm just going to now put that in. So the note durations, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, let's see what we got uh, next. So here, we are not looking at the notes at all. We are only looking at the rhythm. So you can see that I've already done the first measure. There are eight eighth notes in that first measure, hence the eight number eight in the code. All right, so we're gonna move on to the next measure, which is a quarter note. So that's a number four, and then a, um, um, a dotted half note. So I'm gonna talk about this dotted half note here in a moment, but let's go back to the code in that now it's a four, a quarter note followed by our dotted, which is a three, you know, because a dotted half note equals three quarter notes, right? So, uh, but the way I kind of like to do dotted quarters, I find that with the buzzer, it times it out a little bit funky. 
you know? And so I prefer to do like a half note, keep it real simple, like half note and then rest. Um, so it would be walking from, a, walking from our, I can't read something, Christmas Eve, quiet. And then start the next one. So for this, we're gonna get back into our code and make that line instead of a three, we're gonna make it a half note. And we want a um, two beat rest to complete the measure. And this is where I like to code one line at a time because now I gotta add that rest, which remember guys is a zero. Uh, so that's how you know you have a rest. And the zero is worth two beats, um, you know, a half note. I shouldn't say it's worth two beats because then it almost looks like a quarter note is worth four beats and it's not, it's just the, the lingo. Uh, so basically um, the two means that this note is twice as long as one of these. I, you know, it's, it's a little weird, but uh, once you start doing this, it'll start to become a little more, uh, easy uh and merlin is saying can't wait to hear the electro tunes yeah you know we're, we're gonna get through coding this and then we'll be able to listen to it all right so where were we we were about to start the next two measures uh so i'm still on the first line and about and i'm about to start the third and fourth measure which i'm going to put on this uh, new line right here so let's see we have a whole bunch of e's we have three e's and a g so let me do that first um three E's, I said, three E's, and they are all E4s. And we have a G, and that's a G4. And there's been times where I've messed up and I put the wrong octave, and then you'll hear the, the tune go like really low. Uh, all right, so um, walking home from, so I got walking home from, and so now it looks like it's F, E, D, F. All right, so F, E, whoa, I already messed it up, E, <laughs> I can't type, D, oh my gosh, people, <laughs> F. All right, so I'm gonna double check that with the tune here. Um, Oh no, E, it ends in E. That's not an F. So like right here, it should be an E. Oh, I was messing it up. All right. And this measure is easy, it's only in F. Uh, and so again, I'm gonna do the same kind of like uh, technique that we used in the beginning here. Um, Oh, and I did mess up the, the rhythm. I'll go back and fix that. Uh, so, F, one, two. So I'm gonna go here. That final note is an F. And if you look at the music, it is like that dotted half note. Um, but again, I want to make it um, just a half note. So one, two, and then put two rests in there. So back at the code, because I want to add a rest, I got to put my zero, right? Now I did make a mistake in this top line of code here. So I'm just gonna take a look at the song again. Um, C, E, 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 mm -hmm. G, which is the four, two, one. So I actually want to make this just a four. There we go. That was about to be uh, a problem. All right, so now that we have this line of code here completed, we're gonna write the rhythm for it. Um, I just find this easier to do for me rather than writing the entire tune and then you know trying to write out all the rhythm so here we see again, and you're gonna start noticing some, some similar patterns between music. You can see that we have eight, um, eight eighth notes again, you know, kind of like what we already had. So we can almost essence copy and paste, you know, this type of thing. Uh, so going back to the code, we have all these, so I might as well, you know, 
grab these, copy it, and paste it right here. And this is our last measure. So let's check out what that has to do. So here I'm, I'm on the first line, the very last measure, which is that F, and I want it to be two beats and then two beats of rest. So I'm going to do um, our half note and then our half note rest. All right, so far, I, th I think that's right. I think, you know, we can always listen to it and then go back and correct it if we have to. Uh, all right, so then going back to our song, or, you know, you can see what the code here is. We have our half note here and our half note beats. So now we are moving on to a completely new line. So I am just gonna do that and let's see what this new line is. All right, so it looks like a whole bunch of A's. Uh, so I'm also just gonna pull this up big in big O vision, you know, for me here. So let's count the A's. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have six A's and then a G and an F. But let's just get these six A's out of the way and they are A4. So here I go in the code, I'm gonna add six A's, you know, and again, we don't care about the rhythm. We're just in this top line, we're just getting the notes in. So note uh, A4, yes, it, it's, we're still on the fourth octave. A4, how many did I say we need? Like six of them? All right, how many do I have? One, two, three, four, five, one more, all right. And it's up to you, you guys can do two measures per line, you know, whatever is easy for your eyes to follow, you know, everyone has a different system. Uh, so uh, again, to finish up the second line first measure, we put in all the A's, there's two notes left in that measure and that's our G and our F. So let's put that in, note G four and note F, fourth octave, right? So let's go back to the tune and the second measure, which we're gonna continue on the same line is a G and an E followed by a rest. Oh, legit rest, not a made up one that I'm putting in and then another quarter note. So G, E, rest, E, all right? G, E, rest, zero. E, right? We'll take a quick look here, make sure I'm right. Uh, so it's going to be G, E, rest, E. Yeah, all right, so we're right. All right, we're gonna start the uh, the next, the final two measures of this line. Uh, and again, it's all eighth notes. So you can see how rhythmically we can start to copy a lot of those eighth notes, saving us some time. Uh, so for this one is D, D, E, F, E, D, C, B, E. And here we're gonna dip down into some, to some third octave inches here. All right, so I'm gonna start with the two Ds uh, that uh, started off. So let's do that. And I'm gonna start these two measures on a new line. So D, oh, you want, you want to make sure that, did I press the caps? Yes, I did. Uh, that it's capital, you know, or else it's gonna, uh, how many Ds did I say? I get to talking to you guys. <laughs> um, yep, two Ds and then E, F. Uh, D, D, E, F, all right. D, D, E, F. All right, so it's F followed by the octave, so F4. Uh, all right, back to the tune. Uh, D, D, E, F, and I'm on that second to last measure. Now I have to do E, D, C, B. So I'm gonna do the um, E and the D, and we'll come back to relook at the C and D. So E and D, all right. So E, D. Now, Going back to the song, um, oh, and C, because that C is still in our fourth. C4. All right. And so now looking at back at the music, I'm at the last, I'm at the second to the last measure, last note. That is a B, but it now we're going below that fourth octave. Uh, so 
that fourth, um, I'll just play that uh, line for you. Um, starting the second line at the from you know the beginning of that second line so you can say there's nothing or no such thing as Santa that note right there that this is a C4 uh, which is the first note of our four, fourth octave now if we go lower we're in the third octave so B3 is what we have to call that so i'm going to go back to the code and that's going to be if i can ever spell note correctly um and i'll switch you guys back to the code as well lots of switching back and forth b3 where are you at right there oh no <laughs> that's gonna make it go haywire b3 and then it ends with our c so if i can read this code musically basically we have So that's weird. I can read the code. It's music. Um, and so uh, getting back to your your uh, comments and things, uh, Bounty Hunter is saying voice to text. Yeah, I, I need something like that. That way I can go, no, read this. That's genius, actually. That way I can go, note A4, note A. That would make it so much easier than like going back and forth the way we're going. So that, that's genius. Uh, Merlin is saying, I love your Eeyore shirt, and you most certainly are not an Eeyore. <laughs> My dog is. We, I actually have a dog named Eeyore. And the reason his name is Eeyore is because he is 100% that character. Oh, he's so gloomy until he's got his friends around. So I tend to have a lot of Eeyore stuff uh, because of him. And uh, Silvio is asking uh, if I studied music in some kind of conservatory or did I learn by myself? Uh, so I took lessons like a lot of us did uh, growing up. So I never went to like professional school for music. I always like learned through, uh, you know, uh, teachers and stuff. And then it seems like once you know one instrument, I started with piano quickly followed by violin. If you know one stringed instrument, you kind of pick up the rest of the family uh, pretty quickly. And it's the same thing with like woodwinds and brass, I imagine. It's you pick up one and then you can kind of start to extrapolate uh, into the others. Um, so I will relay the same to, to him. Então, Silvio, eu nunca fui assim por uma escola profissional para música. Eu tinha assim, eu estudava, uh, eu tocava na escola. Mas aí você vai aprendendo você mesmo. E se você sabe tocar um instrumento com corda, é mais fácil pegar outros instrumentos que também tem corda, que nem guitarra, piano tem corda também. Então, se você aprender piano, é fácil, mais fácil aprender outros instrumentos. Uh, so Dave is asking, good troubleshooting. If the variable changes case, it becomes a new variable. Good catch, very true. And yeah, we don't need any more new variables. Um, all right. So back at the music, we are on the very last, um, you know, the, the last thing. And uh, because being a buzzer, I like to space out phrases a little bit. And that's why sometimes I'll change the music a little bit or the rhythm from what we see here. So this C at the very end of the second line is a, is, um, a whole note. Um, and so it's four beats long. So um, it's basically, uh, let's see. Two, three, four. But sometimes I like to go one, two, silence, and get the beeper going into other things. Now, is it uh, wrong or improper to do that? No. Like you guys can write it exactly as the song and not do uh, what I'm doing. Sometimes it's easier for troubleshooting too when you hear that pause. You're like, oh, I remember where that is in the sheet music. Uh, so it's totally up to you guys. So I'm actually going to put a zero here. And then a lot of times when I start putting these zeros is, is when I start screwing myself up. Uh, all right. So we know that uh, going, and you can see kind of like where I put my zero right there. And going back to, to the song here, now we're going to do the rhythm. And again, we have eight, uh, eight notes. All right. That's going to make our lives a whole heck of a lot easier. So all I'm going to do, so you see that music is pretty much, it's very cyclical. And a lot of it repeats with uh, similar melodies and lyrics. And so 
you know, you start seeing how, heck, you know, maybe I can start writing some of this stuff. It may not be a platinum hit or anything. It might be a one hit wonder, but you know, you can take a stab. Uh, so with all those number eights, we basically covered all of the little eighth notes in that second to the last measure. And now for that last measure with the C, I want two beats of sound and two beats of silence. All right, so let's do that. Let's make uh, a half note followed by another half note for our zero. Oh, shh, quiet time, you know, no buzzer sound. All right, so here now we are at the third line. We're like almost halfway done, people, look at that. So here I'm gonna go back to our uh, code here and let me just take a look. All right, so we start with a rest. So we start with a zero, all right. So let's do that. Let's uh, start with a big old zero. And I started kind of a new grouping uh, to signify another line. Because when we listen to this, if we hear a mistake, it'll be much easier to find like where the heck you are in the music rather than writing, writing one giant block of code and having to like figure it out. Uh, that's, that's much tougher. All right, so I'm on the third line first measure. And here we see a whole bunch of the same note, uh, four of them. So that is one, two, three, four E's. So let's go ahead and put those in. And I'm just confirming that that's the case in my big O vision version of music. Uh, yes, and that is the case. Oh, that's too big, that's too big. All right, so let's go back to the code and put in our four E's. And again, we're back at the uh, fourth octave. So I said four E's, I think, yeah. I think that's what I said, whoa. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Nanti, Nanti, Bananti. Nothing but note. All right. So we haven't done live coding, I think, ever. Like, usually I have it kind of pre prepared. We do a couple changes here and there. Uh, so one, two, three, four. Like I said, we wanted four. And let's see what else we got. Uh, so after the E's, the final two notes in that first measure are a D and a C. Uh, still all within our fourth octave. So D and C. Let's uh, put that in, note D and C. Oop. All right, so that's one measure. And like, let's do the final measure of this line, which is C and uh-oh, that B goes back down again to the third octave. So that one right there. So now, let me go back to the code and we have a C quarter note followed by a D. So note C four, and now we have to remember B three. Yeah, B three. And let me see if I need a, a rest anywhere in there. Yeah, I'll put a rest. So ding, ding, four. So yeah, I'll put a zero here. And this is my own like creative, interpolation you know uh it just makes it easier to troubleshoot uh but doesn't mean you guys have to have to do it all right so now that we have that line done let's um you know let's uh get the timing of it and it looks like i have not been doing timings uh oh see this is what happens so we did timings for these two lines and then we only did the timing for this line so let's uh, go back and finish these, these timings before we get too far ahead of ourselves. So now, see, because I broke it up, this is line one of the music. This is line two of the music. And um, we did the first two measures. Here we go, let me do this so you can see. Uh, so this is the first line of our music. This is the second line of our music. And the, here we started the third line. So this is where it starts to get easier to troubleshoot the boo-boos. So if you look at the uh, note durations here, obviously we did this first line. And we only have half of our second line done. And remember, it's two measures per line of code. So that means we have to attack the last two measures of the second line. So here we are, let's go back to the second line. And I have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm just double checking that uh, I did this correctly. So, um, oh, I think I didn't do this line of code right here. 
Oh, guys, it's getting screwed up. Oh, no. Yeah, so let's do this line real quick, uh, which is the first two measures of the second line. I'm on the second line here, and I'm just counting up the eighth notes. That's correct. Uh, and then, aha, so I'm just going to do this. And then, what did I say? The second line up here. So let me look at this uh, line. So I'm at the beginning of the second line, the first two measures. So we have eight uh, eighth notes. So in the code, I can go ahead and just copy. Whoop. Copy this. And paste. There we go. So we just have to figure out the second measure. So that's four, 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 and four, because they're all quarter notes. So four, whoa, that's a V8 right there. I don't know if you guys hear that, but it's a V8. A uh, bounty hunter saying the gearhead diva twist. Yeah, we're, we're putting a little gearhead diva twist on this. Uh, and then, uh, let's see here. Da, 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 da. Okay, so now we're correct, and I'm gonna flip you guys back here. All right, so we got our rhythm here that corresponds to this here. And then this second block of code, we have complete now with our second block of rhythms. And then now we have our next line and we're gonna put rhythm to this. So let me uh, take a check on the music here. And this is our third line. So yes, we start with a rest, which is four. And then how many eights? One, two, three, four, five, six, eights. So four and then six eights. All right, so because that is a quarter note rest, and then I said six eights. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, and then what else? So we have now finished the first measure of the third line. Still on the third line, let's put the beats in for that second measure. So that's a quarter note. And then I'm gonna say that's a half note and then one quarter note beat rest. So that'll be a four, two, four. All right. So four, two, whoa, two, four. Right? Yes. I'm like telling myself, yes, that's right, you know, uh, who knows. All right, now we're gonna do, now this is a little bit of a weird line because it only has three measures in this line, but I'm coding it exactly as the lines that I see on the music. That way I can always whip up the music if something is wrong and know where to look things, uh, look for things. So because we only have like um, one more line, Actually, I'll keep it to our two and two groupings. Uh, so I'll put this, uh, the third measure, all by his lonesome on his very own line. Uh, so again, he starts with a, a quarter beat rest. So, or quarter note rest. So let's go ahead and put that in right here. Oh look, coincidentally, it starts with another zero. So you see it's, it's um, you know, it's pretty similar. And then after that quarter beat, rest i'm on the third line very last measure it goes um d and then the next line is like that so it's um d e f d c d all fourth octave so let that that's easy for us so d e f let's start there and d e All right, there's more to this measure. So D, E, F, uh, D, C, D. All right. D, C, oops. D, C, D. Ah, oh, everything but the underline. D, C, D, all right. So. Luckily, I can have the code here just to kind of like uh, look DCD and comma. 
So let's look at the rhythm of this. Let's not forget our rhythms. So we have a four for our quarter note rest, and then the rest are eighth notes. So four and then one, two, three, four, five, six eighth notes. So four and three eighths is what we're gonna put in the code. So we're gonna do a four and uh, six eight so one two three four five six I'm just gonna boop copy this and put it there and look at our music once more uh, so here yep and that is it it's a very kind of uh, short and easy measure uh, and it's by its lonesome that's why it's so short uh, so if you look at the code, you'll see that, oh, it's, it's all by its lonesome because it's just one measure. This is two measures worth. That's why they, you know, it looks so small and same thing here. It just looks short because this is two measures worth of uh, uh, music and this is only one measure worth of music. So guys, I think we got two more lines of this. Yeah. All right. So we are on the fourth line now that starts with our, our E. And that is a whole note, but I'm going to divide that into two beats and two beats. So let's do, let's see here. And because we are starting a new line in the code, I'm going to go ahead and go back up here and start a new line. So I forget what note that was. I think it was an E. I believe it was an E. Yes, an E. And I'm going to put a zero for my own interpretation, you know. <laughs> and let's see, let's go back uh, because we want to do two measures worth of this. So we're going to move on to the second measure. And you can see a funky little symbol that starts it. And that's an eighth note rest. We've been looking at quarter note rest. So that's going to be assigned a value of eight along with everything on that line. Uh, so let's see here. Uh, we started with our first measure, which I want to break up into two, and then rest. So for this, now going back to the code, theoretically, could we just like extend the timing of this zero to bleed into the other measure? Oh yeah, that would be less code. But for my purposes, just to help me troubleshoot, I like you know to basically write everything out. So we'll have another rest, and that's going to have a uh, eighth note uh, value when we get down to the timing of things, uh, and you'll you'll kind of see how that works. Now here, if we're getting back to the song, the second measure of that fourth line, we see one, two, three C's. So let's get them out of the way. All right, and those are all within the same uh, fourth octave. So note. Note C4, note C4, how many were there? There were like three, note C4, yeah, note C4. There we go. Um, and uh, Bounty Hunter is, uh, uh, Dave is like, that's a Hemi, oh yeah, that thing that fired up, that's that's the Durango outside, so yeah, that, that's definitely a V8. And uh, Bounty Hunter is saying, does there need to be a space between those two lines? Which two lines? Um, technically, there doesn't really need to be any space between any of these lines. Like, I can all scrunch these together. Uh, this is just visually for me to be able to quickly find where I'm at in the code and relate it to the music. So theoretically, you know, you don't really need um, all these line breaks. And you'll find that a lot of code online does not have this. And so sometimes I'll go through the code and uh, make them myself. Uh, because I can take an instrument out like this and basically look at all these and start playing through if I know the song that they did, you know. You know, gotta think about it a little bit, but I'm like, oh, okay, so that's that line and then I can start breaking things up in the code. Um, you know, you guys can do it by a piano if it's easier for you guys to do or sing it, you know, you can sing along. Uh, and so Dave is saying, probably not, this is a comma delimited, yes. Uh, the diva is separating the lines for readability. 
Uh, that's exactly right. I am only separating the lines for readability. There's no, when you code, you don't, you don't have to separate anything. Um, so this, like right now in talking to you guys, I completely forgot where I am. So because this starts in its new line, I know that the very beginning, this very first note is going to be on the one, two, three, fourth line of our sheet music. That's the only reason I do this. Uh, and the code uh, works just fine. So getting back to where we were, the fourth line now to refresh my memory, we're doing, it starts with an E, it's a whole note. So it's four beats, but I'm gonna break it up, two beats of note and two beats of quiet. Um, so we have that here in the code, uh, two beats of note and two beats of quiet, which we'll specify down below. Then we were starting the next measure uh, here with this uh, zero here. So let's see where we were. Uh, in the second measure, we have that eighth uh, note rest. And then we have one, two, three C's, which I've already put in. Uh, so then uh, E, E, G, G. All right, let's get that put in. So. <laughs> so embarrassing. E, E, G, G. All right, let's see where I'm at. All right, so G, G. All right, now I'm about to put that very last measure. And what I've been doing is grouping two measures per line and, and one block of code equals the whole line of the music. Uh, so because this measure, uh, this line number four only has three measures, I'm just going to put this very last measure by himself on his own little line. Uh, so he starts with an A and an F, and I'm just going to see this in big O vision for me. Yep, that's true. Sometimes like you can't quite tell where the note is when the sheet music is this tiny. <laughs> uh, so that is going to be an A and an F. All right, we'll get we'll get to the rest of the the sh the that little uh, measure there. So starting on uh it's a new new line so i even forgot what i said af yes af all right so note a and note f all right we have a couple more notes in that measure and oh we got a rest we got a rest that's a quarter note rest so let me put in my zero before i forget let's put in a big old fat zero there we go uh, that's our rest. And then the two notes after the rest is a F and an E. So let's put that in, an F and an E. And you can see how the majority of the song is in the fourth octave. So just uh, mindlessly, I'm putting in a whole bunch of fours. I'm putting fours on everything, which kind of, if you get too mindless and you go to another octave, oh, you'll hear it. You know, when you play the song, all of a sudden it'll like jump up like an opera singer. Uh, much better opera singer than me. Uh, all right, so we are completely finished our third line and we got to do the rhythm. Oh my gosh, people, let's do the rhythm. So starting with our uh, line four here, uh, we're totally done writing in the actual notes and the zeros for where we want spaces. Now we got to say what the rhythm is. Uh, and so let me scroll down here in the code before I flip you guys and uh, prepare that. So I wanted to do two beats of sound and two beats of... Uh, of no sound. So, yeah, that's what I want to do. I was going to change my mind and do something else, but no. All right. So, two beats of sound and two beats of no sound. And then, uh, so now we need an eighth note rest. So, that zero has to be an eight. Um, I'm on the second measure now of this fourth line. So that little funky little symbol, that's, we're going to put an eight in place of that. And the rest are all eighth notes. So we might as well put eights there. That's eight eights. So let's put in eight eights. All right. Do we have eight eights somewhere? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, where I can just copy and be lazy about it. There we go. There. We got our eight eights. And uh, all right, so that's the first two measures. And in our code, I'm gonna go ahead and just go down, start a new line to represent this line right here. Uh, that way, if you hear a wrong note, 
you can know exactly where to find it here. If you hear a wrong rhythm, you can know exactly where to find it here. And that's why I separate. And you might decide to do four measures in a line. You know, I like to do two measures because it keeps it short. <laughs> so there's no right or wrong uh, for this. Uh, so for the very last measure of our fourth line, it's uh, 44488. Okay, quarter notes uh, are four and eighth notes are eight. So we need three fours and two eights. All right, remember that, people. Three fours, one, two, three, four, and how many eights? Two eights? Is it two eights? I don't remember. Let's see. Yes. So one, two, three fours and two eights. So I got an extra four here, people. All right, three fours and two eights. And don't expect this to come out right the first time. You know, we may have to come back and uh, troubleshoot this thing a little bit. So, all right, so we are on our last line. Last line, people, oh yeah. So that looks like two Ds. That's basically what all we're coding. And this last line only has two measures. So that's one line of code in each block that we're doing. So I'm going to scroll back up and I'll prepare another line while you guys aren't looking. You know, hold on, hold on. Uh, all right, so it looks like D, D, E, F, uh, E, D, C. Oh, there's that B again that goes into the third octave. So let's remember that so we don't end up sounding like a, an opera singer. Uh, all right, so for this one, it's D, D, E, F. All right, let's get the, that little first group uh, going. D, D, E, F, right? What else is there? I'm on the same measure, so we've done the first four notes. Now we're gonna do the next four, right? So that's E, D, C. And we'll get back to that other octave. D, E, C. And remember that B is down the third octave now. Uh, and then is there any more in that measure? No, so that measure is done and we're gonna do our final measure which is a C so that's a C4 uh, and again I'm gonna break it up two and two uh, two with sound two without sound so if I go here we're gonna go sound for our C4 and put a zero for no sound so let's go all the way down here and I'm gonna start a new line and this is only gonna be one line so let's see here, the very last measure, we have eight notes in there, eight eighth notes. So that's a whole bunch of eights again. So I'm gonna uh, copy, let's see, who can I raid? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yoink, I'm gonna put you down here. Boop. And uh, if I recall that last note, our C, I want to do two beats of note and two beats of no note. Now, of course, the very last one, we don't want any comma. You know, that's the end of the tune, just like we don't want a comma, you know, here. So theoretically, this is correct. And for now, I think I'm going to leave our notes at a thousand. It might be really fast. You know what? Let me slow it down just in case. I'll put it at a 2000. You know, just in case. And um, let's see here. I'm going to, uh, and I'm not gonna check my work. I'm gonna live dangerously, right people? So let me save this. Let's see here. I'm gonna go ahead and um, put you guys back in our main cam here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and save this and email it to myself on the other one. So uh, Robert uh, Kresik has a great one, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, that one was good. Uh, and a bounty hunter is saying, I was referring to the duration lines to signal each group line of music to match up with your notes above. 
uh, yes, I was trying to, you know, do the same. And hopefully um, I did it correctly. You know, how many lines do I have? One, two, three, four, five. Five blocks. So here I have one, two, three, four, five blocks. Theoretically, it should be correct, but there's one super important thing that I forgot to do. Um, and that is set the number of notes. Like how many, how many notes are even in this thing? So let me um, get you guys back up on here. And so we set our, our duration of the song. We want it, you know, in about 2000 and then calculate, you know, the individual beats based on that. But we totally forgot to count how many notes, uh, including the rest, are in this song. Because we got to put it here. So let's, let's do it. Oh, my God. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Now, what I do secretly is I put a comment there. The two slashes uh, means... Uh, this is just a note. It's not part of the code. So that way we can keep counting and I don't get lost. So 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 43. Uh, let's see here. 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60. Nice people. 60. All right. So then, where's my mouse? 61, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 70, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 75. All right. 6, 7, 8, 9, 80. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right. 85. All right. So now the only thing that Bounty Hunter might be mentioning is that there's some kind of mismatch between the number of beats that I have and a number of notes that I have. And that's going to be a, a problem. And oh, we'll definitely, we'll definitely hear it. Uh, so we have, what did I say? We have 85. So let's go in our code and change our notes here to 85. There we go. So theoretically this should be correct so again i'm going to shoot you guys over uh here and i'm going to go ahead and get us uh, saved and emailed to that other computer so let's see i'll save it as let's see what am i arguing though we're going to save it as grandma grandma got run over all right let's save this and I might as well save this uh, pitches as well let's save it in there all right so I am just going to email it to myself pop open DOS email all right and let me get into my email here. This is kind of annoying. This computer is not set up for the board, the ESP6288 board. Uh, so I have to do everything on uh, that other computer. All right. Let me composey. Dear myself, please find this amazing piece of music called Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer. Please enjoy. Uh, all right, so let me find it here in our Arduino folder. There we go. Get these two and send. Yes, got it sent. All right, so I'm gonna switch the mic. I'm gonna bring it on over. All right, so. I'm just going to flip the mic here so it might be a little bit a little bit bumpy. There we go. I'm back at with you guys and let me wake up this computer because it's it's a, a sleepy. It's always asleep. All right. 
right, so let me close out of all these other Arduino projects because like last time I ended up uploading the wrong one uh, to you guys. All right, wake up. All righty then. It's like, ugh, I'm so tired, gosh. And then uh, uh, Kurt is like, a buzzer project going great, I see. Yep, and we're about to hear it. Let me just get into my email here, das email, and see what we got. All right. It's the verse, very first one. I composed a very kind, uh, kind thing to myself, and we're going to open this with Arduino. Any day now. All right. And let me open this, this pitches. All right, let me make a quick, uh, for whatever reason, it's angry at the pitches document. So I'm just gonna copy and paste another pitches into it. All right pitches.h it's right on my if you just look up pitches.h you can find it and i'm just going to copy and paste it for whatever reason it's like yeah you know what there's some kind of thing with this i'm not we don't feel like opening it so there we go copy and paste into my pitches file there we go all right people we are ready to upload it to my little device here all right let's see what happens let's and we got our buzzer in place not the annoying one and let's upload and this upload takes a little bit a little bit drum roll is it done oh it might be done Oh, no, it's not. All right. So there is an error. I'm just going to take a quick look because I totally think I know what this error is. So as soon as I find it, I'll show you guys what it is. Oh, I forgot a comma. All right, I'm just uh, scanning this now. You know that whole thing about like, eh, we don't need to check anything. It's all good. If you put a lowercase um, letter, it's, it's not going to recognize it. Or if you forget a comma, except the very last comma, of course. Then, uh, then it gets angry. So I'm just making sure that I didn't put any lowercase e's, d's, c's, or whatever. And I was missing a comma on one of the zeros. Uh, so it should be good now. I'm going to try and upload it again. And I'm just going to show you guys where I had issues. I'm going to just beam you guys back over to the computer. And if... I go back to the code and we go back up here. Look at this. We got zeros with no commas. Ah, oh, curse you zeros without commas. So I forgot that second zero here. There we go. Zero without commas. No bueno. So let's try uploading this again. There we go. Hopefully that's the only, only mistake. Come on, Grandma. Let's get run over by some reindeers. That's in a wrong key. <laughs> I'm reading code right now while this thing uploads. Almost. Uh, 
yes, and Bounty Hunter is noting the new um, ringer or our new buzzer. And that's because earlier, like if you watch this back, we played uh, Jingle Bells with our regular active buzzer. And the problem with the active buzzers is they're great for like being annoying and, uh, you know, alerting to you that something is wrong, like your water, uh, he you know, hot water heater is leaking, somebody put their hand in the cookie jar, that kind of thing to really alert you. But the frequency, it, it's, it's, doesn't have a big like frequency span, unlike our passive buzzer. And that's why I swapped them out. It also has a much more dirty sound. This has got a much more like classic MIDI sound that we're used to. So that was a, a pretty good switch. All right, so theoretically there's nothing wrong with our code, but that doesn't mean that there aren't mistakes in the notes or in the duration or anything like that. So let's see what's going on. And I'm gonna put this down because I'm going to raise the, um, I'm gonna turn this off because it does make a, a hum. I'm gonna raise this up uh, for you guys to be able to listen to uh, in our microphone here. Let's see. All right, there's some mistakes there. There's some rhythmic mistakes and some, um, it, you know, some numerical uh, mistakes, some beat mistakes. So you can hear the first one right in the first line. Uh, so. So. Da -na 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 so there's something there that's not quite right. And so if we go back to our code here and see what's going on with this. Uh, let's see here. Let me get you guys back on with me. Uh, and so let's uh, refer, let's first uh, check the notes here. And the other way you can do this is do line by line and play it on on here and just always remember to increase though the value of your total notes um, further down in the code. Um, that's, that's the best way to do it. But for us to keep going back and forth over, I figured, you know, we would just code the whole song here on the computer. Uh, so uh, let's check to see that the notes are right. And there was one kind of octave issue that I think like, oh, we might have like screwed up the octave. Uh, so I have the code and I'm looking at it as I look at the sheet music here. Uh, so, C, E, 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 and then two more E's, D, C, G, E, rest. All right, so I'm going to check that with the, uh, the beats here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then a quarter note, and then a half note, I think it's that half note that's causing an issue. I wanna play it again. Oh. It's gotta go through the song. I unplugged the, the buzzer. All right, so it's going through the, the verse right now. But theoretically, it should be correct. Oh, it's not correct. I get it. That should be a two. All right.
all right, it's that second line that's causing uh, issues. Da na 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 na. So line two, uh, the third measure. So let me take a look at that. And because I, I broke out the code, this is line two. And uh, what did I say about uh, line two? It's this third measure here. So that means the problem is right here somewhere. And the problem is with the timing, not the actual notes. Uh, but just to be sure, I'm gonna go ahead and check that against the notes. So we have D, D, E, F, E, D, C, B, C. All right, so now I'm gonna go to our thing here and it should be this block of code right here because it is the second line and third measure. So yes, that should be our block of code. And we should have eight eighth notes, um, which, whoop, wrong song, which we do here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's something funky with those last two ones. What what did I goof on? Um, da na 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 na. Hmm, it looks right to me. Da na 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 four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So sometimes I find that anytime you go below four, at like a three or a two, it doesn't always hold the beat quite right. Uh, so one thing we might do is, I think I'll leave it for now. Let's take another, take another listen. Crank it to 11. Yeah. Oh, I can't bring this this little guy close enough. Uh, this is like the closest I can bring it, but let's see. That's the first line. Yeah, it's holding a couple notes in a funky way. So why are you doing that? So basically everything kind of goes good through here and then it's all going good through here. This is kind of like where it starts to be funky. And this note B3 here is an eighth note, which is the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eighth. It's the eighth uh, beat. So let's check our melody here for the eighth beat. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So indeed it is an eighth note, which is totally correct. You know, um, so I'm thinking there's something funky going on when it strikes these twos. And if you listen to it, every time there's a two, it kind of behaves funky. Uh, so maybe we need to change these twos. We need to change the rhythm of the music, uh, become more creative with it. So let's see if there's a way to, um, to do this in a creative manner. Um, although the front of the music also has twos, like right there, and it doesn't seem to have as many uh, issues. That's that. See, it holds it there. So I'm thinking maybe we'll just do like a four here. Da na 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 na. 
There we go. I'll unplug it. Uh, so maybe here we need to become a little bit more creative and you'll find this. Like if you use the numbers to the codes exactly like a robot, it doesn't always work. And I'm f I found this with Jingle Bells as well, that anytime you needed to dip below like a two, it gets a little funky, you know? Although here it worked perfectly in these two lines when we had these twos and these twos here, it timed it out pretty well. Uh, for whatever reason, when we got into kind of this area, it started to get funky. So if we look at that, uh, that second line there, which is this one right here, um, this one right here, I'm just going to review the notes uh, one more time. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six A's, one, two, three, four, five, six A's, G, F, G, E, rest, and then E. So let me move you guys a little bit. There we go. So I can see. Uh, and then uh, D, D, E, F, E, D, C, B, <laughs> C. Uh, so yeah, I'm wondering if we, C, C. So it has the right number of uh, beats. So I'm gonna start to get uh, creative here. And that is this line right here. Da na, da na 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 na. Yeah, the two should work. I don't know why the two is not working. Everything has got their commas in place. And yeah, I notice anytime there's a two in the code, it was just jacking up a little bit. So why don't I do, let's just uh, change it. Maybe make it two quarter notes. Da na 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 two. Maybe do it that way. Da na 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 na. So that means that we would have to add another C4 here. And maybe we just make these zeros. Nah, t t we have to spell out like every beat. Let's try spelling out every uh, beat there. And we're gonna do the same, which line of code is it? It's the fourth one. So the fourth one here. So da na 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 and then two rests. There we go. So what we did was add two notes uh, to this. So we have to remember to go back down here and add two notes. 85, 86, 87, all right. So all I'm gonna do is just quickly repeat this now on our uh, computer here and leave this up for you know kind of uh, notes for myself so let me let's see if that makes any difference but all in all like we're pretty we're pretty darn close with this tune and let's see if we ooh, tripping up all my chords here my violin chords uh all right so basically i'm going to that uh that line and we decided to add two C's and another zero. So it's um da na 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 instead of da na 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 it'll be da na 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 just spelling out each beat. It seems to love the fours, you know, so so we'll keep keep those fours. And here I'm going to change this in, let's see, that's that line, the fourth line. So four, and then adding another four. 
and then we got to change the number of notes to add two more notes. So you can see the longer your composition, um, if this were any longer than, yeah, I'd probably like, uh, let's upload this. Do it line by line. So do one line, upload it, which is so simple when you're doing it from this computer. Listen to it. Okay, move on to the next line, move on to the next. And as soon as you hear a mistake, you know, you're, you're kind of like in the beginning and you can, you know, fix your mistake. So it is uploading now. Let's see, no gremlins is what Dave is saying. Heck yeah. And yeah, we need to crank this thing to 11. This is a kind of a quiet, delicate, you know, little, little tune playing. All right, that should be. Uh, so I am just going to crank the uh, sheet music here so I can take a look at where it's getting stuck here while we listen. Oh. I forgot to plug it in. So it's got to go through the whole song. Oh, that's the verse. Yeah, it's when it hits those twos. It's just not liking it. It doesn't like long notes. It likes a snappy tone. Yeah, it's uh, a snappy song, a little snappy song. No, no long, boring notes. All right, so let's see if our uh, first two lines are correct, mostly correct. All right, line one. All right, so yeah, anytime we encounter those twos, it's um, not liking it very much. And I found this with the uh, Jingle Bells, I had to change some of those slower notes and add more notes. Uh, so basically you're kind of syncopating your, your rhythm a little bit more. Uh, so uh, as you heard towards the bottom, uh, you, you heard some other uh, notes that were just kind of held on, that were not supposed to be like held on. Uh, and that's because there was like a two in that same line. Uh, so you heard that now that first iteration, it started getting better, you know? And so it's a lot of going back and forth to figure out like, okay, well then maybe I'll, I'll do two eighth notes of the same uh, versus a quarter note. But I found that quarters, which is four, uh, eighths, which is eight, and sixteenth notes, which is the number sixteenth, work the best. You know, anytime you have to start going below four, it just, it, the timing gets a little bit funky. Uh, with it. Uh, so taking a song like um, Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer, or if we look at, let me get rid of uh, Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer, songs like uh, uh, Jingle Bells like this. Uh, let's see if I can pull that up. Jingle Bells. You can see that it's got a lot more like the, the solid black notes, like quarter notes. It's got the dotted uh, but for that, a lot of times you can do two quarter notes or with this one, actually, it didn't mind the twos as much. It did kind of trip up on some of the lines, but like I would do two beats uh, for that second measure, a rest, and then another beat. So uh, in essence, it kind of gives you an idea of how to use sheet music as a guide. It doesn't have to be like completely you know, you got to stick to the sheet music and you can't do anything. You know, at the end of the day, this is the simplified beginner version sheet music, you know, so you're going to find more advanced stuff. I've heard really complex Star Wars things uh, being written I've or being played on buzzers. Somebody did the whole Pirates of the 
Caribbean or Caribbean theme on their buzzer. So you can get some cool Game of Thrones. I've heard that one too. But you do have to kind of go back and forth and just kind of mess with the timing and the melodies just a little bit. Now there is a totally different way to write our buzzer code, which we didn't go over because there's not as many examples online of this. The most common way to do it is the way we did it. You know, you put your melody up top or you can take that melody and put it in the body of your loop as well. But much easier just to kind of have it in its own space at the top. And um, you can uh, then make your corrections and things and your additions or you can kind of compose your, your own thing. But as you saw, it does take a little bit of massaging to get the tune quite right. And with uh, Jingle Bells, for instance... Uh, I was able to massage that one uh, pretty well. So if I upload this one, uh, let's see here. Let's upload a Jangle Bells, some Jangle Bells. And I was, I actually coded this whole song and I did exactly what I told you guys to do, which is I coded the whole line, listen to it. Then I coded you know, the next line, listen to the first and second line. So each progressive time you upload, the song starts getting uh, longer and longer. And that was definitely an easier way to do it. But for our um, practical purpose, it uh, would have been annoying. So um, Dave said, are there 87 notes? I think so. I think there were 87. Now, say you goof and you put less notes that are in the song. What will happen? What will happen? Uh, so it'll only play up to that number of songs. So say you have a song with 100 notes and you goof and you put 85 notes. It'll just play the first 85 and then it'll be done. So if you find your songs getting cut short, the very first place I would look is that variable that defines how how many notes are in your song now say you put way too many notes you know so what i found that happened was say jingle bells has i think it has 110 notes or something like that um and if you put like 120 once it finishes the song it'll just pick a random like frequency and just beep the the rest of the notes at just like a regular interval until you get to that end number you put. So that end number is not going to really affect um, the, the rhythm of each individual note. That's basically set by the two code blocks that we did above. Uh, so I believe our jangle, jangle Bells is uploaded. Let's see how, how that sounds. And I'm going to hold that up for you guys because it's a passive buzzer. It's real quiet. Yeah. And it's plugged in. Yes, it is. So yeah, I was even able to, to get the dun, da -da, the syncopation, and all that took is just kind of messing around with the beats. Now, of course, you do not have to stick with four, eight, 16. You know, you can kind of do like a five, a seven. You know, if you really want to syncopate it a little bit more, you can kind of play with the in-between numbers as well. Here we stuck to the very rigid, you know, note stuff. And sometimes you find that you get better like a better feel, you know, I'm talking about like a buzzer and I'm like, yeah, that song's got feel, man. <laughs> All right, <laughs> calm down there. It's just a buzzer. So guys, I think we did it. Uh, I will continue messing around with the grandma got run over by a reindeer and, uh, you know, try and perfect it to show you guys uh, the code the next time around. And not only will be will we just do a very brief like this is what I fixed uh, or or just kind of like messed around with a little bit tweaked to get it to to be right. Uh, we're going to look at how to put multiple LEDs on one pin using a transistor. Now, all this will not take very much time because we got to tackle the more important thing of de-uglifying this thing. I mean, this thing is ugly. This is not something like you hand somebody wrapped in a present. They'll open it and be like, thanks, you know? And then they re-gift it. They're like, I don't know what the hell this thing is, but, you know, give it to Joey or give it to Donna, you know? The re-gifting. So we don't want our present to be re-gifted. So we're going to actually transfer all our 
schematic here into a real PCB. So I bought like larger PCB so we can cut out Christmas trees and solder this all together and then see if it works. Yeah, in time for Christmas, people. So I thank you guys for joining me for our musical, you know, stream. And we went from code to music, for, to, for, you know, and then back from music to code. And now we know how to write music using code. So that's Pretty cool. Uh, and a bounty hunter is that breaks is saying gold. Uh, David Beck is saying, I see a less than or less than or equal to asking for a friend. I see a less than or less than or equal to. Um, in the code? I imagine you see it in the code. Uh, let's see here. Less than or equal to. Oh, it would be helpful if you guys saw the code too. All right, Jingle Bells, go away. All right, code. Less than or equal to. I imagine uh, it's down here in the loop somewhere is where you're, where, where are you talking? Right here. So, I mean, if I'm just kind of going down. So basically we're going from the beginning of the song uh, all the way up to 80, note 87. You know, and we're going to do that by starting at the beginning and adding one note after the other. And that's what these plus plus is. Uh, then um, I kind of like the pace of the song. I might leave it at 2000. It might have been a little slow. Maybe we could have like picked it up a little bit. Uh, so maybe 1500. I try 1500, you know, on that. Uh, and then let's see. The uh, pin is number five. Uh, let's see here. I don't see other greater than or less than after that. So hopefully I answered your question uh, on that one. And uh, the rest looks correct. We got no comma over here. We have a, you know, a little closing uh, bracket and semicolon uh, jobber. Uh, we have our opening bracket. Everything's got commas where it's supposed to have commas. Uh, same thing with this one. We have a proper close. Uh, and of course, this number is now wrong. Uh, but uh, I'll go ahead and take a, a look at that and mess around with some of these rhythms because it could be adding like a little bit of a five or a little bit of like a seven. It just kind of pushes it in the right direction. And that's what I found with Jingle Bells and with a little bit of pushing and shoving around, kind of like holiday shopping. You know, you gotta bring in some holiday shopping, uh, uh, you know, little spaz into your coding. You know, so so people are kind of that code's got to be afraid of getting the elbow sometimes just to kind of shove those beats in the right in the right direction. So uh, Carl James is like, yippee ki you, you know, I'm going to be watching that this weekend for sure. Uh, and Brian is saying, woohoo, Merry Christmas. So Merry Christmas to all you guys. And Dave Beck is saying, ah, gotcha, incrementing. Uh, so and uh, I don't know if you missed that the first time. I think I might have blown over it. <laughs> <laughs> Might have been my bad. Uh, so guys, I will catch you later this week. Stay tuned on Discord. If you have not signed up on Discord yet, it's free. And that's how I picked out these songs because you guys got on Discord. Uh, those of you that have accounts there and, you know, submitted your favorite song. So we have a channel or like a forum board specifically dedicated to this project where you can ask questions. You can chime in your ideas. Uh, and I read and listen to all of that pretty much every night I am on that thing. So hit up Discord and that's where I usually post first when these streams are happening. Uh, other than that, on the website and of course, social media. So sometimes you got to actively check because I don't post like things that start fights or like are very like virally and things like that. Uh, so hence the algorithm does not like me. You know, we're posting learning and having fun and those things just do not do uh, for the algorithm. So guys, I will catch you later this week where we are going to be doing a lot of soldering and hopefully I don't crisscross anything and make an even more ugly gift. Yes, the objective for this gift is for it to not be re-gifted. Yeah, so the bar is set pretty low, people, but I think we can step over it. We're, we're gonna step over it. So catch you guys later. See ya and Merry Christmas.